Good morning. Buenos dias. <laughs> Was good enough, yeah. <laughs> it's so good to be back. I miss all of you guys and hope you miss us too. Uh, I want to say thank you for all the preparations for our furlough. Um, I think bring chain and chain was a good move. I really enjoyed. <laughs> was was great. Uh, and the canoe trip was awesome. I mean, I felt like Brazil, hot and tiring, was was really good. I woke up this morning doing this. <laughs> so <laughs> pray for my wife. <laughs> but it's so good to be back. I praise the Lord for all your love for my family and me. Thank you for all your prayers and encouragement, emails, Facebook likes and messages, financial support, Christmas card. Your guys' quick answer to our needs has been an encouragement, not just for me, I have to say that, but many other pastors and their families who have received support and love from you guys during this moment of trial. You guys have become a model for all those other churches, and I'm sure our great God was praised with thanksgiving because your guys' love for the body of Christ. Not just in Brazil, other places like Africa who received also support from you guys. So thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. You guys were there. So thank you very much. So I see God is working through you, through this church, and doing great things. And I want to encourage you guys to keep doing this and excel still more. I have just one shot. So I want to go back to the final charge of our Lord Jesus Christ to his followers and be reminded one more time about what, why, and how we are doing the things we are doing. So please turn your Bibles to Matthew 28. And uh, be in verses 18 to 20. Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. As you guys make your ways to Matthew 28, I hope you guys are familiar with Mission Impossible movies. Have you guys heard that? You remember the plot. Nice guy, skillful guy, assigned to do what they call impossible mission, like put down... 42 guys with a pistol, like a, it's not Mike Brothers, but blow out 30 cars with only one grenade, learn to speak a foreign language in two weeks. You guys know that. Strikes me that every time, every time that these guys are in real dangers, like a, he had with him a, a perfect tool or correct information to help him to get out the trial. Do you guys remember that, for example, he was falling off a cliff and then, boom, he recalled he has a special pen, and five seconds, he pressed some buttons. Uh, you guys remember that? Pressing some buttons, bend the pen, and whistle a little bit, and then, boom, it's a helicopter. And then he flies away, and it's just a, a crazy, just a movie, right? 2,000 years ago, however, Jesus gave his final charge to his disciples, and it resembles a lot to the mission impossible, except they are not nice or skillful guys, but normal people with normal lives with an impossible task. So please read with me Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. For me, it seems to be impossible. Hopefully for you too. Eleven men, disciple of making disciples of every nation. Not just proclaim the gospel like Psalm 96 verse 10. Proclaim and say among the nations, the Lord reigns. But disciple them. Spend the time to teach them everything that Jesus had taught to them. Not just proclaim. 
but teach and help them. When we read these verses, I think sometimes we believe, well, we'll probably need some help here, but I think with a little hand, we can pull this off. We can, we can do this. But maybe we are taking Jesus' final charge lightly. Or if you want to keep smart, let not take so literal here. Perhaps, perhaps you've lived and followed Christ more than a decade and never felt the weight of your family on your shoulders. So then it's hard for you to feel the weight of Hutch, the weight of Kansas, the weight of U.S., the weight of the world. We find different ways to understand this text. It's always a little bit different what Jesus really intended. And then we end up facing the Great Commission as a great suggestion. And we start to treat Jesus as the great visionary. Oh, it would be good we can reach the nations instead of the Lord of the universe. So I don't, I don't want to make you feel bad. You might say, okay, you flew all the way here. You don't supposed to come here and make me feel bad. Brothers and sisters, I, I really don't know how much time we have, and you don't know either. So many of you guys know I've got COVID twice, and the first time was really, really bad. I almost died. So I want to make sure that you guys get this thing right. I don't know how much time I have. You don't know how much time we, you have. So let's make sure that we understand Jesus' final charge for us. We don't know with Lord willing or for his permission in Providence, we'll have the third wave or the fourth wave in Brazil. But this we know. As we wait, as we wait for his return, we need to strive to make his name known among the nations for his sake and then the sake of everyone. So this for sure is an impossible task to accomplish. If we take the words of Jesus in its literal sense, we will have to agree that he was charging them and us, his disciples, with an impossible mission. Our only hope, I believe, to accomplish this impossible mission is to take advantage of the tools he has provided for us and appears in this text. His universal authority and his always enabling presence. His universal authority over everything. And then his always enabling presence. So my purpose this morning is first, I want, you, I want to help you to understand the task that has been given to us as disciples of Jesus. And then to encourage you, GBC, to rely on Jesus' universal authority and to rest in his enabling presence for the task of making disciples of every nation. Are you with me? So let's get it done. Let's pray. Are there God and Father for you all things? So again, your word is open before us, and that's the only thing we need. So protect us from any transgression to go over what you, your holy word has to say. I beg you, Holy Spirit, you inspired this book. So help us to get this thing right, not just in our minds, but also in our hearts. Help us to desire the things that you desire. Convict us from the way we are living. Help us, if we are doing this, to excel still more. That's what I ask for me. For my family here. In Christ's name. Amen. So first of all. It's important to understand the context of the passage. So it's in the very end. Of Matthew 28. Jesus is about to leave. For a long period of time. And sit in the right hand of God. He just has done with his sacrifice. He has died. And the scripture, as the scripture had prophesied now, he was back to life. He had overcome sin and death. 
death had been defeated, now was clear for everybody that Jesus was more than just a carpenter, more than just a prophet, more than just a son of man, or a man with wise and powerful word. He was the son of God with power. Hebrews 1, 3 says, He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. And He upholds the universe by His power. After making purification for sin, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So Jesus is not the son of Mary and the Nazarene anymore. It's not just that. He is the son of God with power. Now He is the King Jesus ready to make his way to the right hand of God. It is from this status that he commands to his disciple. And then he's starting to say, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All authority means two things. First, he has all the power, supreme power. When we put together all the other's powers and rulers and governs and all the other authorities in this world, visible and invisible, against him they are nothing. He has ability not just to desire something, but to accomplish. He has no rivals. No other power can come against him and endures his power. But it's more than that. It's not that Jesus is supreme and he, he's, he's capable for, to do everything he wants. But he's always, he's also good. He's the right heir of the universe. The whole world, the whole reality is his, as we say, jurisdiction. He's there. Jesus also has the power to overcome other powers. As the only one rightful in charge of heavens and the earth. This authority means also domain, sphere, over which one has the authority to control or rule. Jesus has not just the right or power to subdue everything, but dominion and control over everyone. Jesus wants us to make sure that we got this right. That's why he included heavens and earth. In the Hebrew mindset, they're extremes of the reality. The way to say anything between heavens and earth, anything here, he has control, power. His jurisdiction englobes everything. This is the extension. He, this expression means complete authority. Authority over the extremes of the reality and everything between them. Not certain authority over certain places or people, but all authority over all the people. Everything there exists is under Jesus' control. Colossians chapter 1 will say, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Of course, here Paul is answering the question, so who is Jesus? And then he's talking about, as we say, well, ontological, the essence of Jesus, Jesus himself. In Matthew, is a little bit different. Jesus is saying to his disciples, look up here. I've got not only all authority over certain places or people or some subjective authority or influence of all the places in all the world. Jesus is saying, I've received all the authority over all reality. In other words, he's saying that there is no place, no state, no county, no village, no territory, no favela, no community, no country, no tribe, no tent, no bungalow, no forest, no street, no house that he couldn't get there and say, this is mine. I have the rights over you. We can see things like that in Matthew 11 verse 25. Jesus had already said that all things have been given to me by my Father. 
The same in John chapter 3. But here is different. After the resurrection, things are different. Romans 1, 4 said, And he, Jesus, was appointed to be the powerful Son of God according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection proved to everyone, everywhere, that Jesus is the Son of God with power. Why is it so important for us to understand that, guys? Because this is why we're supposed to do the things that he is about to tell. So in Jesus' mind, he starts with the why question. I have all the authority. And then he goes to what. That's why the first word in verse 19 is the word. Therefore should be. I know that it's go, but it's wrong. Should be therefore. <laughs> Jesus loves grammar. You guys know that. Should be therefore. In other words, he's saying, because this is truth, I have all authority over everything and everyone, so you should be doing this. If the first sentence is truth, so what follows must be truth. For you guys to understand that, he, that this is not my vision as a missionary. I'm not pressing hard or in, reading into the scripture. We read this and see, oh, Talks about the nation, but, it, but it's really all the world. It's really, Jesus is asking 11 guys, normal guys, nice, skillful guys, to go everywhere and make disciples of every nation. It, it, it's that correct? Are we really understanding this right? So all the other verses or versions of this great commissions, we see, for example, in Mark 16, 15, Jesus said, and he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Luke 24, 47 says, And that repentance and for, for, for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in His name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. So why we make so much effort trying to reach Indians in Amazon? It's so hard. They have so much yellow fevers and piranhas and anacondas and all the dangerous things. They have pretty scary things there. So why we should strive and make so big effort to go there? Why, why so much planning and strategy to reach the Muslim world? They don't want you here. They don't want you there. And it's dangerous. Why? We rely on authority of Jesus over them. It's because Jesus' universal authority that you have to, we must to, if we recognize that this first sentence is true, therefore we go and make disciples of every nation. We need to understand this. We need to understand that. And maybe you, you are thinking, well, um, so are you saying that I should go and make disciples of every nation? Is that what you're saying? No. I'm not saying that. Jesus is saying that. Jesus is telling you that, not me. Because I have authority over all, Jesus is saying, you must Make disciples of all nations. I understand, however, that not everybody will go for a variety of reasons. I understand that. I just want to help you to answer well the question, why not you? Why not you? This is a question that we all need to ask. I know that your plans are awesome. And all the plans that you are making for you and grandkids and whatever, they're, they're perfect. What about the plans of Jesus for the world? Does it count? The final charge of Jesus, he put them together to say, oh, okay, I have authority over all. I need to, you guys need to go. The old tradition says that the 
all the apostles got this, most of them got this right so literal that they put together in the table a map of the world, the known world. They divide in 12 and they left. That's why people say we have still churches in India, really old, over a millennium, because some of the apostles went there. Why should you stay here? I don't want you to feel bad about staying. That's not the case. I just want you to answer the question well. Why not you should go? And after you are okay before the Lord, don't ignore that as a disciple of Jesus, even stay, you must be involved in the task of making disciples of every nation. There are many things, guys, that you can do to be involved. There is a, this is for every disciple of Jesus. It's not something that Jesus is talking to wives and because you are a male, you are saying, oh, this is not for me, I just turn off. You can recruit people here. You can pray for more workers. Here, you can have a prayer meetings. Here, mobilize young people. You can promote ministries. You can represent the needs of the missionaries. You can read biographies with your, your kids and your grandkids. You can give sacrificially. You can pray for them. You can encourage them by text, message, email, video, or whatever. You can visit them. You can ask them hard questions. You can do so many things. The only sinful and disrespectful action that you can do is believe and then leave F as if this text has had nothing to do with you. This is unacceptable. We don't have permission from the Lord to skip this. Just to go over and wait for some missionaries to go. This is for every single disciple of Jesus. And we need to find a way to get involved. Jesus' complete universal authority is what authorizes you and me to go anywhere and to say to everyone that their hearts belong to Jesus. I don't want to repeat myself, but pay close attention to our, ver our text. See how many times the word all appears here. Verse 18, And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all days to the end of the age. Jesus wants you to grasp the big picture. Because he has all authority, all nation needs to be discipled. Teaching them all things Jesus taught. And he will be with us all days as we strive to do that. This means that when we as a church, brothers, do not include the nations in our prayers, contributions, plans of action, we fail to realize God's desire for the nations. Or for Jesus to be worshipped. As the only way to heaven. See guys. I'm killing myself in Brazil. By God's grace. I'm happy. That God allowed me to serve him. Serving his people. But Brazil is not enough. Maybe it's enough. For you. For me. But not for Jesus. Japan. Uganda. Hutch. Manhattan. Not enough. Those things are good. I'm not saying anything contrary to this. We need to do these things. But it's not enough. In the sense of we need to keep moving forward. Pray for more. Taking risks. Always thinking about praying about asking God to bring more help. To make a wider vision of what he's doing in this world. Jesus deserves all because it has authority over everything. So, if the only goal you have in life is to have a great family and a good retirement plan, you're not getting this thing right. 
We can start in our family, and this is great. You are responsible, as we, we heard this morning, we are responsible as fathers and, and husbands to lead our family. This is great. I'm not saying anything about this. I'm saying that the goal has to be more than that. And you can bring the nations and God's plan to your table. You can pray for missionaries as you are eating. You can help others, your wife and your kids, to see what God is doing in the world there in your home. So by God's grace, I'm serving Christ at Planaltus Church in Fortaleza. By the coast of Brazil, white shores, coconut palm trees, the breezing coming out from the ocean. You know that? Hard place to live. <laughs> really, really hard place to live. We are doing evangelism, and that promotes church planting in three different places. Through Grace, through Planalto Church, we are going to favela, 35 minutes. Partner with another church to plant a church there. We are going another city, hour and a half away from, from Planaltus Church, doing evangelism. And another church, eight hours. We just sent a couple of missionaries, people from our church, to be there. We're going there, knocking doors, handing gospel tracts, doing VBSs. And at the church, we are taking records of every unbeliever who visits our church and offered them Bible study and counseling. We have over 20 happening right now. God is saving many. This year and last year during COVID trial, we, we by God's grace, baptized over 25 people. God saved during this time of trial. God is doing so much of things, but this is not enough. We are supporting 25 families of missionaries in Argentina, Japan, Cape Verde, Madagascar, Portugal, and Guyana. Five of their families are from this church. And every, every day, a member of the church will make a, a WhatsApp call to one of them missionaries, collect their prayer request, and put, in, uh, put on our church WhatsApp group. So we pray for them every day. We try to remember them in our meals. You guys have three missionaries. Brazil, Japan, Uganda. You guys can do this every meal. When you hold hands and, and praise God for the meal, you can remember one of the missionaries. Oh, God, please help Morgan. Oh, God, please give opportunity for the Harleys to share the gospel. Oh, God, please help the, the awesome Brazilians that they are willing to you guys can do that. I'm not, I'm not condemning you. I'm, I want to encourage you to rely on Jesus' universal authority to keep the things that you are doing, but it excels still more. So, and then we have the what. We make disciples of every nation. You have the why. Why we do that? Because Jesus deserves it. His authority Miss to be on display among all people. We must, Jesus must be obeyed everywhere. His authority must be known in every place. His rightful position of authority given to him by the Father and his capability to subdue everyone to himself must be on display among all people. Thus, we rely on Jesus' universal authority to make disciples of every nation this is what and this is why but we have more how we make disciples jesus will tell us verse 19 we baptize them in the name of the father the son the holy spirit one name three persons we can see unity and the plurality one name the name of the father son the holy spirit one one God, three persons. What else we do? We teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. We don't give our opinions, our statistics, our perception of reality. We take what Jesus had taught us and we give to them. That's the only thing we do. We don't have to invent anything. 
just to transport the things that we have in Jesus and give to them. And in the end of the verse 20, we have this word, behold. I don't know here in English, but in, in Portuguese or in Brazil and other places, we don't use this word, behold, very much. You guys use this a lot? Behold. <laughs> behold. No? Yeah, we, ha we have the same problem there. We don't use behold a lot. Behold, however, it's a very important word. Believe it or not, at least here, behold, we could translate it as wow, or whoa, or mmm, or even. <laughs> In this context, this phrase could be translated as but remember, or Listen carefully or take heart. Almost say and don't, and don't worry. I will be with you. It's very interesting to see the flow of the Jesus argument. Look up, look up here Jesus saying, I have all authority. Yet because this is truth on heaven and earth, you must go and make disciples of every nation. Tell everyone that the Lord Jesus Reign, make disciples of every nation. And I, I can see the disciples, 11 disciples, look at one to each other and say, What? Is this years ago? What? We? To go everywhere and make disciples? And Jesus comes and says, Oh, and behold, or oh, oh, remember, or oh, 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 listen carefully, or oh, take heart, or oh, don't be afraid. I will be with you. When we look at other texts in the Old Testament, we, we see the same kind of a pattern. We see the, the magnitude of hardness of a task. It's balanced with the magnificent enabling presence of God. For example, Exodus 4. You guys remember that. Jesus, oh, not Jesus. God called Moses and said, hey, I've heard the suffering of my people. I need you to go there and deliver them. No, no, me? Yeah, you. I want you to go there and deliver them from the hands of the king of Egypt. No, 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 I, I don't want to go. Now you go. And God says, I will be with you. So this, this greatness and hardness of the task to deliver slaves from the most powerful army in the world is balanced with the presence and the power of God who walk with Moses through the whole process. We can see in Joshua, he had a task to replace Moses, leading people and destroying all the Canaanites, removing them from the land so Israel can receive the land that God had promised to them. But Joshua was afraid. You guys remember that. And, and God would was say, was say to, to him, okay, don't be afraid. You go. And I will be with you. I will be with you. Acts 18, verse 9 and 10. Paul Wilde is preaching in Corinth and facing persecution. The word says, The Lord said to Paul in the night vision, Don't be afraid, but keep on speaking and don't be silent, for I am with you. And no one will lay a hand on you to hurt you, because I have many people in this city so when we think about to go out and make disciples of every nation why we are so afraid why are you so afraid a life without buffalo wild wings or brownie cookie dough blizzard Dairy queen they're awesome why are you afraid poor healthy system why are you afraid? Don't be joyful. Lose your life. You have better plans. Again, gods, I'm not saying that all of you needs to go. What I'm saying, all of you need to be a part of God, what God is doing in this world. Somehow, you need to be a part of what God is doing in this world. As a disciple of Christ, if it's fear that holds you back, you need to understand for those who are living for those who understand what God wants us to them, wants from them, they could go and Jesus will be with them. 
We can see that all the time in the scripture. For example, in the end of the, the, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, verse 20, chapter 24, Jesus is talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit. He says to them, you are witness of these things. And behold, or behold again, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Why they need such a power from high? Why? We can see throughout the book of Acts, they need the power from high to be Jesus' witnesses. I'm not saying this is the only reason why the Holy Spirit came, but this is there. We can see everywhere. Acts 2, 1 to 4, the Holy Spirit came. They were filled with it and spoke the great deeds God has done. Acts 4, verse 5 to 8, boldness to proclaim Christ and stand for what is right even in face of persecution. Acts 4, 23, especially Verse 31, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they started to speak about God. No fear, no shame, no confusion. The disciples cried out to God for more power in order to, that they make speak the word of God with greater boldness. Acts 8, 29 and 39, the Spirit is leading, pushing, pressing on people's souls to promote God's agenda. You want to see a man, a woman filled with the Holy Spirit? Is he or she passionate about what God is doing in this world? Or it's always here. It's always helped me to go through. Those things are very important. But it's more than that. If the Holy Spirit came in, one of the big reasons was to promote God's agenda. To help people not fear. To fulfill what Jesus is telling. I'm with you always until the end. Why we're not seeing that? A man and a woman filled with the Holy Spirit with desire. The same things that the Holy Spirit wants. They want to make most of Jesus. Where? Everywhere. Among the nations. We strive for that. We pray for that. We beg for that. Acts 13, verse 2, 3, and 4. The Holy Spirit is the great instigator. Instigator, the one who separates people from specific tasks. Acts 10, verse 19. The Holy Spirit will push Peter to break the old understanding about Gentiles and to receive them as people of God. The Holy Spirit's doing this all the time. Not just helping people to grow in their maturity. But help, helping people to move forward God's agenda to reach all the nations with the gospel. So why are you so afraid of? Let me illustrate how this flushes out. It's a football tournament. It's for you, Chuck. Sometimes you play home field, in a home field, is that and other times you play in a different places, right? So the story goes that the player were very anxious and nervous about playing all these different places and fields. The coach, noticing that he was focusing on the wrong things, like the quality of the, the grass or the altitude or even the lights, told the player, Listen, son, you must spend time getting to know your team. Focus on your team, and you don't have to be concerned about the field. So Jesus is playing on our team. We should not be concerned if it's Manhattan, favelas in Brazil, Iran, the other part of our city here. We shouldn't be afraid of that. Jesus is playing in our, on our team. Doesn't matter 
where you're going to obey him, declaring his authority. He'll be there with you. And we can rest in his enabling presence to fulfill this impossible mission. Until the end. So that is how we accomplish the mission. A mission that is not mine. It's not yours. It's Jesus' mission. We just share as disciples. Because we love him, we want to see his authority over all. We rest on his always enabling presence to make disciples of every nation. Jesus has given us this impossible task. And we cannot accomplish with our strength. But take heart, Jesus is saying. It's his mission. It is the mission of the one who has all the authority. Supreme over all the other powers or ruler in this world. The one whose power cannot be resisted. And his power is with us through his presence. To guarantee the success of our task. You can rely on Jesus' universal authority. And rest in Jesus' enabling presence. To fulfill this charge of making disciples of every nation. So really have everything we need. I'm praying for a Manhattan project. I am. But this is not enough. This is, is enough for us, but not, not for Jesus. We need to, to keep doing things, but excel. Excelling still more. I've been waiting for the next. What's next? What city are we going to reach? What country? We should. Making plans, starting to pray and think about these things. Where are the missionaries and workers? Right here. Right here. If, it's the, if they are not here, they are your kids and grandkids. Talk to them about God's desire, God's desire and plan to reach the nations. Tell them about the authority and the worthiness of Jesus. Tell them. So what we do as church, we make disciples of all nations or die trying to. While we do that, Jesus deserves it. He has all authority. How we do that? His enabling presence. The power of the Holy Spirit given to us. So we live a life full of risks for His glory. Filled with sacrifice out of love for Him. And filled with power because of His Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? So let's get it done. Let's pray. God, is your word, not mine, not theirs. It's your word. So help us to take this text, its literal sense, and to find the ways to apply to our lives as moms and dads, as kids, young adults. Help us to apply this text to our lives. That it will we'll never live for ourselves, not anymore. Not knowing that you have a plan that encapsulates everything. And we, as your disciples, followers, are included in this amazing plan. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, Please, help my family here. I'm so thankful for the work that you are doing in their hearts. And uh, all the love that you had put in their hearts for my family and me. And Morgan and the Hurleys. But I beg you for more. There are many, many things to be done. We are thankful for the things that you are doing. But please, give us power we need the wisdom we need resources we need raise people from this church God to reach the nations 
not for the sake of the nations first but the sake of your great name the name of Jesus who has all authority over all people do this we beg you by the power of the Holy Spirit for the sake of every man and everywhere for the glory of God the God most high in the name of Jesus amen <laughs>